All right, let's have a look at what StarCraft 2 looked like back in 2010. Specifically, the Protals. What's so crazy is that this is only a few months before the release. So they posted this on YouTube just a few months before the actual release. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to show you a demo of StarCraft 2. Before we begin to... So that's good old Dustin Browder. I don't actually know what Dustin Browder does these days. But Dustin Browder, for those of you unfamiliar, he was like the, the lead game designer on StarCraft 2 for a very long time. And uh, he basically made all your favorite RTS games, okay? <laughs> like at least many of them. If you look at like his... Uh, there's like a list somewhere. I think it's on his uh, Liquipedia page or something along those lines. But he made like a lot of very, very good uh, RTS games back in the day. I don't know what he's up to these days, but yeah, he's no longer at Blizzard, sadly. Anyhow, he also did a lot of stuff for StarCraft. Today, I'd like to remind everybody this is a demo. This is still work in progress. We've got a lot of balance work ahead of us. Nothing even, even little things like the font are very different. Like, uh, just the font of the things being used. This looks a lot more, I don't know if you can properly see that, but that looks a lot more like the StarCraft 1 font than the StarCraft 2 font. You're going to see here today is final. We're going to begin today with these Protoss Zealots. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft. You can see they're still armed with their powerful side blades and they're still protected by a very tough personal body shield. They still look more like StarCraft 1 Zealots than StarCraft 2 Zealots though. I don't know what the difference is. I guess it's their animation or something? In StarCraft 2, the Zealots also have a special charge ability. This allows the Zealot to close quickly with his enemies. Wow. The Zealot's charge makes him extremely dangerous against ranged defenders like these Marines. It's also funny that they did all of these demos on the normal speed. Attention, Protoss. This is Admiral Gastavir of the Terran Dominion. You will withdraw immediately or be annihilated. What are those? Are those siege tanks? Siege tanks. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft, and they're in a classic. Oh my god. So wait, hold up. This was posted. What was it? 2nd of February 2010. So StarCraft 2 came out a couple months after this. Everything looks so different. In position, using that high ground against us. They're shelling our zealots from range, forcing our zealots to go the long way around. And you can see our infantry are just taking a pounding as they try to approach this Terran position. I'm actually surprised just that any of those zealots lived. All of that heavy <laughs> Terran firepower. In order to attack a Terran position like this, that's so well defended, we're going to need to bring in another new Protoss weapon of Whoa. war. After the destruction of Ire and the events of Brood War, the Protoss have been forced to adapt. The Supernova they Men's Club? Mortals. They have a special type <laughs> of Protoss shield. Alrighty then. Calm down, Chet. It's a hardened shield that activates only when the Immortal is struck by a very powerful attack. You can see the hardened shields are activating now and they're absorbing most of this Terran fire. This makes the Immortal the perfect choice to assault this kind of defended Terran position. It's funny. Like, essentially what they've done to pretty much every single one of the units, because I've seen little clips of this every once in a while, it's like they... They sliced every unit's HP in half and then doubled the attack speed and damage output by two, you know? Like, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Obviously, the entire gameplay over here is on a no much, like, lower speed as well. But, yeah, the Wings of Liberty Immortals actually were very different as well. Like, Heart and Shields would be very broken right now. Reapers, move it! Here come the Reapers! Terrans are sending in their Reapers. Wait, 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 hold up. Let me get this straight. Dustin Browder's just about to explain how Reapers are the counter to Immortals. Infantry unit is armed with two pistols and uses a jump pack to avoid different types of terrain. Their small pistols don't activate the hardened shields of the Immortals. This makes the Reaper the perfect choice for countering these powerful Protoss troops. Right. Take notes, Terran players. 
This kind of fast, bloody raid is something the Reapers really excel at. You can see how powerful they can really be hunting down slow-moving units on the field of battle. Checkmate, Protoss. The Reapers can use their jump packs to be very effective base raiders. Even the photon cannons look more than StarCraft 1 photon cannons. Look Once at those things. Are inside a they even base. do like the little dipping thing in Majig. Go for is our pylons. <laughs> With a pylon down, our photon cannons go offline, making us vulnerable to continued attack. Fortunately, we have some new weapons. The Protoss can use the phase prism. To the phase the prism. Field anywhere they wish. The PP. <laughs> you can see with our photon cannons back online, these Reapers have no choice but to run for cover. So some things do look different, but actually not worse. Yeah, I agree. In addition to a number of some new things units, do look a little Protoss bit smoother. Also have access to some new mechanics. Protoss can use warp in to teleport units anywhere they want. Into that animation is power. so stuttery. You can see here we've created some stalkers. Wait. This is a new type of specialist. You know the stalker portrait in game? If you go to like, hold up, let me. Uh, how do you change your portrait again? They have this face, right? But do they have that in StarCraft 2 right now as well? I've never really paid attention to it. It seems like these that we just looked at have very obvious faces. I guess they still kind of do. But they're kind of, yeah, they still kind of have them over there. But they're kind of like easy to ignore. With these, they have like a very obvious face. Protoss Dark Dragoon. Oh, wait, they're called Dark, wait, Dark Dragoons? It's not very tough, but it does have a powerful weapon. In addition, it has a special blink ability that allows it to teleport a short distance anywhere it can see. What, they can blink? That sounds broken. Ooh. This allows the stalker to even the blink AI was a little different there. That's something different the there with the blink AI. Very potent at chasing down fleeing enemy forces. I guess these are still mostly the same. I mean, they still look a little bit different. But... Zerg forces detected. Multiple contacts closing in on our position. The Zerg have arrived sooner than we expected. You can see they're using the Nidus worms here. So dramatic, Dustin. Beachhead, sending Zerglings against us. You'll also notice that we're using our Stalkers here to blink away from these Zerglings. This is an example of how a skilled player can use the Stalker's blink ability to Very great skillful. advantage. Damn. Unfortunately, there's simply too many Zerglings for our skills. Stalkers to survive. In order to deal with a Zerg infestation of this magnitude, like we're going to need to Parting, some... Parting is pretty good at microing his Stalkers. But they've got nothing on Dustin. Additional reinforcements. All right, these top-level Protosses. Now we've shown you how you can use the send in the face prism power field anywhere you wish, as well as warp in. These two mechanics can be used together to create a large. <laughs> I have never seen anyone warp in like that. That's so funny. That was actually kind of beautiful. <laughs> The classic 20 gateway opener. This is fantastic. I really like this. Yeah, it's like the legacy of the Void cinematic. Look at this. Still a game where large armies battle against large armies. Stand as one. Wait, no, that's. That's World of Warcraft. Hold the line here for a short time, but in order to really survive against this many Zerglings, we're going to need to bring in some additional firepower. Oh, these are the Colossus. So these have the exact same skin. Every other unit so far in the game has had a different, like in this video, Rotter has had a different skin than they do in the actual multiplayer of the game, or like StarCraft II in general. They're powerful robotic units that can use their long legs oh, to what? step up and down. Oh, they're using a P ability. Look at this. You're pissing over all of those Zerglings. Able to do large amounts of damage to small <laughs> swarming units like these Zerglings. <laughs> they don't piss like that anymore, dude. This makes the colossus. You get fined if you do that. You can't do that outside. For this group of zealots. 
Yeah, it looks like it's dealing single target damage. Where it's chasing the units. Yeah, it's going from like unit to unit. And then there's like a cooldown after a little bit of zapping. Huh. That's actually kind of cool though. Yeah. That looks way cooler than their attack animation in game right now. Because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense the way that they like attack a single target unit the same way as they do like a group of units. They're kind of like walking void race, yeah. <laughs> we are the blades of fire. Yeah, look, that makes way more sense for single target damage of a void radio. And while the Protoss have developed many new weapons, the Zerg have continued to evolve. These Zerglings are mutating into Banelings. These small suicidal creatures are filled with explosive chemicals and corrosive acids. Makes the Banelings very potent against zealots that have no defense and oh, even no. dangerous against the mighty Colossus. This is the 2020 meta, guys. If you're struggling as Zerg, just make more Banelings. High ground in order to survive. Is that Colossus outrunning Banelings? It's got- wait. It does have 725 health. It's got 325 shields. That's so much. How much range does it have? The That's a tempest. Is using our new IK system to step up and down this cliff. It's just one example of the new types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft 2 to make the game more dynamic. And while the Colossus is very dangerous against ground targets, it's much more vulnerable to an air counterattack. This swarm of mutalisks will quickly destroy our Colossus. That was quick. And continue on to attack our base. Rookie mistake, dude. You gotta go for that mineral line. We'll you can't actually fight Phoenix. with mutas that well. This is a new Protoss air superiority fighter. It has a special overload ability that allows it to fire its weapon at all nearby enemy forces. Unfortunately, after it overloads, the Phoenix goes offline for a short time. It can't move, it can't fight, and it's helpless against a counterattack. <laughs> In the hands of a skilled. So they're like a Corsair, but different. It kind of looks like the Corsair animation, anyway. Yeah, it's air area of effect for Protoss. So they have splash damage in air to air. Player, the Phoenix can be extremely deadly. If you overload at the right time against the right enemies, you may destroy them all, <sighs> and there will be no one left to take advantage of your temporary weakness. Yeah, the current Phoenix is way cooler, though. All kidding aside, like, not having control of a unit in StarCraft 2 is not a very positive thing. I actually think Phoenix is already cool. Terrain here in StarCraft 2. We've got our space platform here. And you can see we've also got a lot of great doodads in this environment. Some wonderful texture work. You notice we've got a planet there in our deep sky in the background. There's some asteroids floating in the distance. I sometimes forget that this game came out in 2010, right? Like, even though they've obviously made improvements on the game's graphics ever since this video was published, StarCraft 2 still holds up very well. Like, if you compare it to other games that came out in 2010, StarCraft 2 looks great. Right? I mean, can we look up, like, big game releases 2010? Can we have a look? What games came out in 2010? The first Red Dead Redemption, Mass Effect 2, Heavy Rain, Mafia 2. Fable 3, Halo Reach. Oh my god, those are some old games. Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands, Bioshock 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I guess that's one thing though that goes for pretty much all of the Blizzard games. They, um, they age well, you know? They age really well, like the graphics, um, they age well. Yeah, some of those have aged well as well. Like for example, Halo Reach and stuff, still looks good, but... Yeah, 2010 was a good year for video games. I actually just realized that as well. There are some absolute gems in that list. To be fair, I didn't play that many games after StarCraft 2 came out for like five plus years. I literally just played StarCraft, but... This is just one example of the types of environments we want to create for StarCraft 2. For honor. Yeah, that honor parallax effect is great, obviously. Like the way that everything is moving and shifting and the depth and stuff. We take it for granted now, but... Well, the Phoenix are very powerful against small flyers like Mutalisks. 
they're much more vulnerable to heavily armed and armored targets like these battle cruisers. They just don't have the firepower to cut through that thick Terran armor. Ooh, that was a thick with double C's. Like two C's at the end. In order to deal with a battle bring forth the void ray size, we'll need to bring in our warp rays. Oh no, warp rays. Sorry. Yeah, this was published warp in 2010. A specialist Protoss flyer that does additional damage the longer it fires at a single target. Oh yeah, it did that this in Wings of Liberty warp. too. So it had like different faces. So one thing people would do, I remember on Blistering Sands. Blistering Sands had a bunch of rocks in the back of your opponent's main base. So what you could do is you could make a bunch of Void Rays, charge up on your opponent's rocks, and then go in with the thickest beam you could get straight into your opponent's main. It was actually really cool. Yeah, 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 you would charge them up. And then after a while, people started like bringing sacrificial units just to charge up the Void Rays. Sometimes Void Rays themselves would be used to charge up the other Void like, It was silly. Potent against heavily armored targets. So look, it's got a small beam right now, but it will get thicker. Well, it got thicker than that in the multiplayer at some point anyway. Yeah, Void Rays were all about making sure that you would not lose your thick beam. Same thing that makes the Warp Ray powerful warp against ray, battle sorry. cruisers also makes it very powerful against enemy structures. You can see this barracks is taking loads of damage and will try to lift off to escape, but it's just not fast enough to get away from the Warp Ray. <laughs> how did so many things change within like four months? I don't know exactly how long it takes. Like, if you want to go, like, they sold this in physical stores, right? So, like, you had to actually, like, sell a disc. I don't know what the time is between, like, the actual shipping of the 1.0 version to stores and, like, the actual finalization of the game. But there's only, like, a few months between this and the Wings of Liberty campaign being released. There's a lot of difference. Yeah, they must have made this, like, this video in 2009. Like, this must have been quite a bit before they actually published it because that doesn't make any sense yeah they probably they probably had this video ready to go way before 2010. all right you alien freaks you made your choice now you're gonna pay the price <laughs> The warp rays are very vulnerable to small units. You can see these marines. Show some of that epic micro again, Dustin. Way too much of his damage firing at a single target makes the oh. marines a strong counter for the warp ray. You notice our physics system is in action there. As these warp rays die, their pieces fall down and slide down the ramp a little bit. It's just another example of the types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft II. <laughs> I love the humble break. Now, with our warp rays destroyed. It looks like the Terrans are going to Physics. fortify the position here against us. <laughs> the strongest we weapon in the game, the guys. End of our demo here today. There is the Marine. one last unit we'd like to show you. Now our foes will feel the power of the Protoss. There it is! The worst unit in the game, currently. I don't know, maybe the Ultralis. is the Protoss mothership. It is the ultimate weapon of war in the Protoss arsenal. Ooh, I'm kind of blocking it right now. A single mothership at one. But look at my, look at the bottom section. What are we even looking at? What are these circles? I think that's a vortex. That's some sort of thick ass beam. And that's, I guess, time warp or something. I don't know. We're just about to see. Time. And each mothership costs a significant number of resources. It's got 1,300 health. That's a lot of health. The ship has several special abilities that can really make her worth the expense. First of oh, these is she's the going in alone. This is a special ability oh, that slows down the all enemy movement inside the field. You can actually see the missiles slowing down as they try to strike the mothership and stopping just before they strike home. That's actually really neat. Field goes off, the missiles fall harmlessly to the ground. 
This makes the mothership extremely potent. That was just one mothership, huh? Base defenses like these missile turrets. Feel like that would cause some very big performance issues, though. Ability, the mothership but also has a special attack that she can employ against ground targets. This is the planet cracker. Ordinarily, this would expose your mothership to significant enemy fire. But as you can see, these marines simply don't have the firepower to punch through that thick Protoss shield. Ooh, that was at least three Cs this time around. Yo, I've never even seen that animation before on the on the mothership though. The way it like it like you know, it's like a cat. It like you know, it curls up and stuff. They use this in the campaign Since at some you're point. Only allowed a single hmm. mothership. She's usually a very high priority target for the enemy. Well, she's got 1300 health, so I don't know about that. The enemy to throw everything they've got in an attempt to destroy it. That's the phase ray, though. The motherships have a limited amount of energy, which controls how often they can use their special abilities. In a real game, this mothership would now be out of energy and very vulnerable to a counterattack. But since this is our demo, we're going to cheat a little bit here and give this mothership some additional energy. You this cheeky. additional energy will allow our mothership to employ her final ability. This is like a MOBA unit. New subscriber detected. <laughs> it's, it's a complete MOBA unit. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Agent. Welcome back. The mothership can create a black hole which is extremely dangerous to enemy flyers. This is a family-friendly show. Uh... Never mind. The animation is so cool. Look at the range on that cast as well, yeah. Oh, they just disappear! <laughs> I thought that would like come back again. I thought it was like a vortex, but no. They're gone, dude. They're stretched. It was a, a literal black hole, although it does disappear itself as well, apparently. Anyway, uh, it's one of the top 10 things that science can't quite figure out yet, but that would be something. Just fly your mothership into your opponent's main base. Throw in one black hole. Get out. Their entire main's gone. There's nothing you can do. By the heart of iron, we proceeded. Directive confirmed. Oh, it only attacked flyers? Oh, it probably only worked on flyers? Okay. Now is the time to bring our full strength to bear. Ah, okay, I didn't quite realize that. Tassadar, Commander, carry forth the light of Ayer. Loka, the meta must have been so good back then. If you're actually looking at this video through rose-tinted glasses and you think that this would have been better in multiplayer than what we normally have right now, you're out of your mind. What do you mean? <laughs> like, all of these things would totally suck in 2020 StarCraft 2. Like... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, <laughs> they're neat abilities, but the whole pacing of the game is completely off in all of this. Yeah, all of this would be super broken. <laughs> it would be funny to see, I'll give you that. But. We've shown you some old units with some new abilities, as well as a great many new Protoss weapons. We'd like to leave you today with a look at a battle between the Protoss and the Terrans. This is the first time anybody outside of Blizzard Entertainment has seen these two races engaged in an epic battle in Stark. Uh, we call them factions now, Dustin. Come on, dude. Two. That comes to Siege Tank. A literal square.
Is that siege tank even firing? Oh yeah, it is every once in a while. What's surprising me here to most though is how similar all of this is to StarCraft 1 in a way, you know? Like a lot of the unit behavior and a lot of the unit models are significantly closer to StarCraft 1 than they are in StarCraft 2. Although I guess in StarCraft 1 those Marines would have died many, many times. Zealots in StarCraft 1 are really good. Yo, guys, should we have a look at the other ones as well? I mean, I'm assuming there's nothing else, right? Yeah, there's gonna be some nukes. Okay. Nuclear launch detected. Oh, no. Well, that's not how I expected that battle to end. Okay, the StarCraft II Zerk unit trailer. Here we go. Yeah, it's a little bit odd, but... Apparently the uh, the channel that these videos are posted on is not accessible anymore. It's a good thing we're looking at this right now, man. Nice beat. I I love how this already displays the frames per second that they could achieve back in 2010. Like these were proper next generation graphics. Look at the frame rate. This is recorded in like in like 720p at best, maybe 480p. Oh, those bailings are so big! Those bailings are the size of roaches. So wait, is there is there no Dustin Browder here to explain and guide us through this? I don't think so. I I don't think so. Dustin Browder no longer available. Oh, look at the little baby lurkers. Those are half the size of the bailings. That's so funny. Aww. I kind of want one as a pet. Oh, here come the Corruptors. New Ooh, system. dude! They have some Terrible swag when they fly. Are you seeing this? They do like a little, ooh. I'm a Corruptor. Yo, baby. You come here off. You know, like that. Yo, Dark Templar. Thank you very much for the resub. Look at them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just... Going through this. I like it. Yeah, they're vibing. They're listening to some good tunes. Hold up, what did I just do? Oh, they just corrupted the battle cruisers. And now the Vikings apparently are attacking their own stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Wait, is it permanent? Pretty sure that's permanent. <laughs> Hello? It's like a free neural parasite. <laughs> Just bring a couple corruptors. Are these infestors or what? Could literally be anything. Oh! I have no idea what they are doing. Oh yeah, they are infestors. So they're infesting the Terran structures. I like how a lot of their units make way more sense in the 2010 edition of the game than they did in any of the actual life versions of the game. Like the Corruptor corrupts units. The Infestor infects structures. They don't do any of those things anymore. Oh no. 
You know what I like? They don't really seem to do this anymore in multiplayer either. You know how sometimes they like in these kind of videos, I think they may do this in co-op or in multiplayer, I don't know. They like do like left swipe, right swipe, double swipe. It's like learning how to swim, you know? But I don't know, they do like different animations for attacking. It's cool. Yeah, they do that in the campaign, right? I wish they did that in multiplayer. Like it's just an animation, but I think it would be nice. Are you saying the Zerklings are gonna win? Okay, I was gonna say, that, that seems insane. That does not seem broken at all. I'll take that for 25 minerals and 25 gas. Whew. Hold up, is that, that's a spawning pool. I'm guessing right next to it is an Evo chamber. And then I guess those are spine colonies or whatever. Oh, there's Brenda. Oh my God, Brenda is huge. Get off of my creep. <laughs> she can deep tunnel. Brenda casually two shoaling marines around here. Get out of here. Big mama Brenda. She's about as big as that Thor. Get out of here, Terran. So, so far what I've learned is that in the alpha of StarCraft 2, everything was countered by Banelings. It's kind of like the 2020 meta, but then like, a you know, nah, it's, it's, nah, it's basically the 2020 meta. I love the fact though that like the queen seems to be surfing the function of the mothership, you know? It kind of looks like you can only make one. Oh my god, look at that, like, like, look at that Colossus animation. It's different again. This time around, it's shooting, like, a whole bunch of lasers. <laughs> Only out of his left eye and then right eye and then left eye and right, it's taking turns. Look at Brenda. Is she just like... I don't know. Getting the troops all hyped up? Is she beating the drums? Can they feel the vibrations of her front paws? Yeah, she's just there for moral support. Look at the Ultra though. This is still 2020 as well. Pay attention to that Ultra Lisk. Look at it. Uh, I, I wanna fight! Oh no, I gotta go to the top! Maybe there's room there! Oh no, I gotta go back down! Uh, try and go around! Oh, scrap! Oh! And it might get an attack in here eventually! There he is! Oh my god, look at that guy! Oh! Yes! He did it! Ultras are still as smart in 2020 as that Ultra. Every other unit has changed, but... Uh... Hold up, this is... This goes on. And on. <laughs> I love how the last five minutes of that video, or, or close to the last five minutes, is literally just... Attacking. The Terran. I actually like some of these sound effects a lot. The little squeaking and stuff. These are the Terrans. They're flying their buildings in to set up their base, much as they would in the original StarCraft. Notice the command center here is holding five SCVs. This is a special new ability that allows the Terrans to rapidly expand or redeploy on the battlefield. Yeah, we never you see that. You can see some buildings here that you may recognize. We've got our factory, 
which allows the Terrans to make a number of... So this is clearly much later on into development, right? This is much, much later. Is that a new ability on the CC? I mean, it may as well be. Look at the adjutant, actually. Yeah, the adjutant looks completely different. Hmm. Is that a landed Viking as the first unit inside of that factory? So wait, hold up. It's got Viking, Siege Tank, Diamondback. <laughs> Powerful vehicle units. We also have our barracks, which the Terrans... Okay, that's Marine, Medic, Ghost. ...used to create all of their infantry. You may notice there's some new add-ons attached to these. So those are basically the Academy add-on things over here, right? Caduceus React here. Increases the maximum energy of medics by 50. Barracks. The first of these add-ons is the Tech Lab. The Sorry. Terrans use this to purchase high-tech upgrades. The Terrans also have a new add-on called the Reactor, which can be used to give an additional build queue to any building it's attached to. This effectively is doubling the production capacity of this barracks. This new add-on system also allows the Terrans to reconfigure their production on the battlefield. Yeah, that's still a great mechanic. And we that's can fly great. fly this factory into its place. In multiplayer, that factory would be misplaced right now. That factory would not be in the right spot. You want a piece of me, boy? And once the factory lands, that factory will gain the benefits of that tech lab, enabling you to build a number of high-tech vehicles. Is the game at a different angle? Vehicles ...and purchase vehicle-related upgrades. I think it might just be tilted somehow. I don't know. Base defenses are or still... Or maybe they're like a little zoomed in. Terms. Yeah. We've got our bunkers, which of course will load up with our infantry. Aw. They're kind of cute. In addition, the Terrans have a new base defense. This is the sensor tower, which the Terrans can upgrade into a radar tower. The regular sensor tower detects enemy cloakers. Enemy cloakers? Oh my god, what? I've never the seen radar that. The tower allows Terran players to see enemy units moving in the fog of war. Wait, so that first circle was just an indication of where it would detect cloakers? That range is awful. But the radar tower allows anyway. Terran players to see enemy units moving. Is there a guy in the radar tower, guys? Do that cost supply? In yeah. the fog of war. Would you actually this hear is a that? powerful new ability that allows the Terrans to detect approaching enemy attackers and prepare for enemy ambushes. Oh my god. Oh my god, stop it. Oh god. The Battlecruiser is back in StarCraft 2. Battlecruisers can be upgraded to have their own special, unique mega weapon. Each battlecruiser is upgraded individually. A popular choice is the Yamato what? Cannon, which does significant damage. A popular choice is the Yamato Cannon? You gotta upgrade them individually? Damage ...to single enemy targets. Yeah, that's the top priority, getting rid of that radar tower. Not the things that are actually killing you. Another look, at that, look at that little icon as well for Stimpak. That's basically the StarCraft 1 Stimpak one. Powerful choice is the Plasma Array. This is an area effect attack against enemy ground forces. Wait, they actually... So wait, every individual battlecruiser could be upgraded? One of them had a Yamato gun there or Yamato cannon and these have like, what was he calling it? A plasma array? To deal with these battlecruisers, we'll need to bring in our Vikings. This is a new Terran tactical air fighter. It's armed with two powerful missiles that it can... Well, right now in multiplayer, they basically have both, right? They have both the plasma array as well as the Yamato cannon, like, to kill everything. ...used to engage enemy capital ships. Just not as effective at both of those things, but... Viking can also deploy into an assault mode that allows it to move on the ground. You can imagine all the different ways that you can use this on the battlefield. Of course, you can use it to avoid incoming enemy aircraft fire. 
I love how that is like, it's taken, I would say about nine years of StarCraft until we actually saw some proper usage out of landed Vikings. Like recently we've been seeing Vikings getting picked up by Medivex, which is not even something that would be fathomable in the early days of StarCraft. Like there's actually been some moments where a Viking landed as part of the army and actually gets microed back by a Medivex. It's actually neat. I really like that. But you can also use a special... Viking has to be one of the coolest units designed in multiplayer. Like, it's... They're, they're really Assault cool. mode to make devastating attacks on enemy bases. We're going to fly north now and look for our enemy base. And once we get into position, we're going to take our Vikings and we're going to transform them into their assault mode and continue the battle on the ground. Aww. They're not so different. They're pretty similar. Well, the Viking is a very flexible unit. It does have some drawbacks. It's very vulnerable to counterattack from a dedicated mm. anti-ground unit like these siege tanks. Is he actually going to siege those up? That was simply too much firepower for our Vikings to survive and be forced to transform into our air mode and move away. To attack these siege tanks, we're going to bring in our new Terran gunship. This is the Banshee. The Wraith? It oh. fires a volley of rockets at enemy ground targets. Everything is slow. Yeah, everything is super slow. We copy. Sir, don't serve. Everything has AOE. Yeah. <laughs> everything has AOE. Everything is slow. I actually think there's still too much AOE in StarCraft 2, but... Everything has some form of splash. Now these Banshees are vulnerable to this Marine counterattack, so we're going to cloak our Banshees and engage them with our area effect missiles. Fortunately for us, those Marines have clustered up, which is exactly what you don't want to do against the Banshee. Oh, dude! Now the enemy has a sensor tower nearby, which is allowing him to detect our Banshees, and those missile turrets are engaging us. Well, the Banshee is very powerful against ground targets. It's just not tough enough to stand up to those missile turrets. And once again, we're forced to retreat. Once again, dude. Can't believe it. To continue this attack on the there enemy base, we're going to bring in our Reapers. This is a unit that you may remember from our original announcement demo. I do. He's got his jump pack, which enables I him do, to Dustin. traverse this difficult terrain. The Reaper also has a new ability. Weren't these guys really good against Immortals? You haven't seen yet. This is his demolition charge, which he can throw anywhere on the battlefield. The demolition charge takes a short time to go off. They have spider mines now, except they're nukes. But once it explodes, it can do devastating damage to static enemy targets. The Reaper is also very powerful. <laughs> Look at the distance the on that command center the from the middle. Position here in this SCV stream. And start to destroy Look at that planetary. Oh my god. It looks like the Terran commander is responding by transforming his command center into a planetary fortress. This is a powerful new Terran base defense that our Reapers simply don't have the firepower to deal with. Everything is slow except for the planetary. Actually, there's only one gas in this base. Yeah, one gas bases are very common in StarCraft 1. So a lot of this is based off of StarCraft 1, right? Like, even if you look at, like, the, the Wings of Liberty early missions, not all of it is set in stone. Like, there's some very random locations for some things. I actually kind of hope they will add this instead of the current, yeah, classic Planetary Fortress skin. This one looks way better. Like many Terran players, we have bases all over the map. As you can see here... Our supply depots are blocking access into our base, preventing right. the enemy from closing with our siege tanks and allowing us to shell them from range. Inside our fortified position here, we're going to use our SCV to build a new special Terran assault unit. This is the Thor. It's an assault unit so large and so powerful that it's actually built out on the battlefield. Got to say, I actually like that. It has 900 hit points. Okay, yeah, that's a little much. But I gotta say, I actually like the idea of it being built by an New SCV specifically. Detected. Thanks for the awesome content you create and the great gameplay. Hey, thank Keep you. Keep doing what you're doing. 
Thank you, Fafki. Thank you for the four months. Now, it might appear that we are trapped inside our base. But in StarCraft II, supply depots can be lowered into the ground into a special defensive position that allows there it is. units to path over them. The special defensive ability. And once we've moved through, we can raise our supply depots back into position to protect our siege tanks. Amazing. This better be an emergency! Donation confirmed. Your friend ever just pulls out at your house and starts building a whole goddamn Thor? Yeah, I imagine in StarCraft 2 right now they would just bring a couple of SCVs and then build a Thor right on side of your right inside of your third base. Um Yeah, I'm with you. Now you may notice that the Thor you has some additional guns on his back. You. Thank you, Nebafe. Welcome back. These special artillery attacks can be used against tough Proxy targets Thor, like this enemy but without a forces. factory. Like everything in StarCraft II, the Thor does have his weaknesses. This That's the, the Diamond Vex. Ah, the Cobra. Sorry. Hover tank. It can actually fire on the move, and it uses his powerful rail guns to batter through the Thor's thick armor. Notice the Thor turns very slowly. That's as fast as the Thor can actually turn. Not that thick. Not that thick. It makes the Thor very vulnerable to this kind of speedy attacker. Now in order to continue our attack on this enemy base, we're gonna need to bring in some specialists. We really couldn't see making StarCraft II without including the ghost. Is he wearing a Santa hat? Like, what is he wearing? It does look like he's wearing a Santa hat, doesn't it? I'm here. The ghost in StarCraft II is Can far I sit more on his lap? than he was in the original StarCraft. Ah, in addition no. to his personal cloaking field, the ghost can use his sniper rifle to deal lethal damage to enemy biological targets. The ghost also has access to a number of call downs. You've already seen our nuclear weapon. Merry Christmas. Now we'd like to show you the drop pods. This special ability allows the ghost to summon he rains presence. squads of infantry anywhere he wishes. Imagine this in multiplayer right now. Just imagine it happening. Oh no, my opponent is dead. Ah, oh, crap, he had three ghosts. Should have upgraded that into a radar tower, huh? As you can see, the Terrans have a number of new powerful units and some classic units with some new abilities. All of these add up into a flexible and powerful side that is more than a match for any of their enemies on the battlefields of StarCraft II. Not gonna lie though, this is cool. It is a little nostalgic seeing what they had intended for some of these units back in the day. Obviously the game has uh, developed far past this point and the fact that they're still working on it 10 years down the line is pretty fantastic. And obviously, uh, while well, the game is never gonna be perfectly balanced, I mean you can't, it's still, uh, still pretty freaking close. Yeah, I must have seen this once upon a time, a very long time ago. I, uh... I don't recall watching this, though, at any particular moment. But, uh, it's cool to see what, what they had in mind with a lot of different things. So, everything was slower, everything had way more health, and everything had splash damage. That seems to be the general gist of it. There's, like, splash damage left, right, and center. I'm glad that they decided to go against that idea because, I mean, splash damage, I, I genuinely think there's too much splash damage in StarCraft 2 as it is. But, um, yeah, it, it's, it's good that they decided to go with a little bit more single target damage. I mean, for example, Protoss right now in multiplayer is so ridiculously reliant on splash damage. It would be cool if they, you know, could make an army that's not based, based around either, you know, Storm or Disruptors or Colossi. <sighs> Other than that. It's pretty good. Yeah, it does sound a little bit more like Warcraft. More hit points, more abilities, 
and a much slower gameplay, it does sound a lot more like Warcraft. You're right. Pretty cool. <laughs> 